Hello YouTube! Um, in a previous video on this channel, I, which I'll leave up here somewhere, um, and also at the end, I talked about the 1856 um, uniform regulations for the Royal Navy, which introduced the system of stripes that we're uh, familiar with today to identify officer ranks. But around the same time, the Royal Navy also wanted to standardise ratings uniforms. Up to this point, ratings didn't really have a uniform per se. Um, sailors' clothing was purchased on board from the slop chest. Uh, the slop chest was like an on-board shop, which, if you were lucky, had ready-made items of clothing and um, if you're not lucky, you basically just got a bolt of cloth with which to make your own. While the army were issued with uniforms made to a pattern, sailors in the Royal Navy just uh, had, well, whatever you can make out of this cloth that we're going to give you. It's blue. That's it. That's, 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 that's how much uniformity there was. Although there was no prescribed uniform, Sailors' uniforms or sailors' clothing became uniform more by way of practicality in that they were all made from the same cloth usually and often by the same people. And certain factions would, would develop um, at this time purely out of practicality. Um, so things like the bell-bottom trousers, um, a silk, black silk neckerchief, which doubled as a sweat rag uh, and a nice big broad um, detachable collar to keep your jacket from being stained by the tire in your fashionably long hair. Also captains um, being captains they like to sort of try and one-up each other um, especially when it came to uh, gig crews or boat crews so there, there was a certain certain amount of pride having a smartly dressed crew captains were sort of incentivized in that way to provide smart or even ostentatious clothing for their crews the smartest ship in the navy of course was the royal yacht in 1847 queen victoria was so impressed by the uniforms worn by her sailors that she had a sailor suit made up by the onboard tailor for the young Prince Edward. So this then became the prototype for the what was to be the uniform. Um, so in 1857, the said, "Right, that's it. That's that's what your uniform is going to look like." It looked sort of like this. This is my friend. Uh, <laughs> This is my teddy bear in his Royal Navy uniform. And that's kind of what they came up with. It's, uh, well, apart from my bear's not wearing any trousers, uh, but the jacket, blue jacket with a big uh, wide detachable collar, and he's got a little black silk neckerchief there. Interestingly, the from this picture of uh, Prince Edward, we then see aristocratic children starting to get dressed up in these uh, in these sailor suits. It became a f it became a fashion for children, um, especially children of the aristocracy, to be dressed in this way. And that got picked up by the Japanese, who used the sailor suit as a school uniform. And yep, yeah, Sailor Moon. That's where it all started in 1860. Uh, the badges worn by petty officers and seamen were ordered to be embroidered in red worsted for both white and blue clothing. The various badges in use at this time, you had a the chief petty officer, similar to the chief petty officer badge that's in now, uh, which was a, an anchor surrounded by a wreath um, with a, a, a crown on top. The At this time you had a first class and second class petty officer. So a first class petty officer is what the petty officer wears now with the crossed anchors. A second class petty officer would be a single anchor with a crown and a leading seaman would be just the anchor with no crown. But the chief petty officer's badge from 1853 to 1857 is 
it's an oak wreath, uh, a wreath of oak leaves from 1857 to 1890. Um, the wreath is laurel wreaths, which is similar to what they have now. Then from 1890, the chief petty officer doesn't have a badge at all. He's just got his two buttons on his cuffs. Um, so it's not until we see the modern uniforms um, with rank slides that we see that badge make a reappearance. The other item of clothing, of course, that we see um, introduced by the Royal Navy in 1857 is the sailor's hat. Now, this has origins from the uh, Russian Navy in about 1811. Um, and it was almost a copy of what the, the army was wearing at the time. So, uh, when it was introduced in 1857, the the round hat with the uh, the tally which, which has the ship's name on it, uh, it's blue and it has a, a white cover for um, for summer use. So the blue hats lasted until uh, 1956 with a white top generally being reserved for warmer climates. From then everyone wears a white top um, until now. Um, now at the same time of course in 1956 um, officers also switch to white tops all year round uh, until very recently. So in 2021 uh, blue hats were actually reintroduced um, for the submarine service only. Um, I'm not sure if this is for just officers, I haven't seen any photos or ratings uh, in blue hats and I think it's only private purchase so like so if you can afford one, you, you can get one. But uh, for the rest of the Navy, it's white hats. So in around about 1848, we also see the French Navy um, adopting a similar style of hat. And they've got the famous uh, red pom-pom um, on top. The Irish Navy have adopted a, a similar style with, it. I think it's a green pom-pom. Um, but the actual cut of the, the hat is more like the Royal Navy's. I think the French ones are a bit uh, more of a flatter shape. The, the, the Royal Navy ones are quite um, sort of stiff and upright. It's interesting you compare the hats worn now with the hats worn back in the Victorian times. The, the Victorian sailor hats were quite floppy, quite soft and it's quite obviously a, a working hat. Um, the modern ones, especially in the Royal Navy, it's it's more stiffened, it's got a plastic top. So the modern ones look a bit more stiff, plastic even. Uh, whereas the the older ones, they were maybe a bit softer, a bit more workmanlike, a bit more casual. The US Navy went a completely different direction with their um with their hats. They used to have almost the same cap as what the British, French, Russians, everyone else was wearing. Uh, and they came up with this, and I think um, Master Chief Sea Chest did a, a video on this about the Dixie Cup, which is like the, the Popeye hat, which started out as a, a white hat uh, with the, the, the brims kind of progressively move upwards. Um, so it's a very different style to what most other navies are wearing with the, which is flat on top with the um, with the cap tally round um, round the brim so certainly in, from the Victorian era up until almost the Second World War this is a working outfit you know it's, it's very it's a very practical um, uniform and then we get into the First World War we start to see use of uh, anti-flash outfits and then um, the Second World War the first kind of move away from the traditional sailor suit um, so we see the what developed into the the, the number eights or the um, 
sort of working dress with the blue shirt um, that comes in and then now we've got PCS is introduced so now we have the PCS uniform uh, which I think they started trialling it in 2012 and it was introduced to the Navy in 2015 which is being updated again um, with Rig 22 um, first being introduced last year um, the difference being the new rig will have um, rank slides on back on the shoulders where they belong instead of being on the front. Um, there's a bit of con controversy about this uniform with the lack of pockets and the lack of um, non-substantive non rate badges. So yeah, um, that's the thing. But um, the original sailor suit continues on as uh, the number one uniform, the ceremonial un uniform. Um, yeah, doesn't show any sign of going away uh, anytime soon. So that's it, the story of the sailor suit as used by the Royal Navy and various other unit navies uh, throughout the world um, and some children as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment down below. Do you do you like the sailor suit? Do you think it's a a good look? And uh, see you in in the next video. Bye. Ah, I'm there. Ah.